all you real ones in Broncos country, I'm going to see your name on the injury report because you're going to have a back injury from patting yourselves on the back because the thing that overwhelmingly we have all seen as we followed this team came to fruition today despite all the national media laughing at the pick, um, saying it was hopium, like all of the ridiculous takes on the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton's uh, offensive geniusness, all of that, it, it's coming to fruition as the Bo Nix era in Denver has truly begun. Bo Nix was officially named the starter for your Denver Broncos. And without a doubt, this is the happiest moment in this channel's short history just since uh, basically Halloween last year. This is the high point. Really, I think this is the high point in Denver Broncos history since uh, February of 2016 when we hoisted the Lombardi Trophy. Um, this is just an incredible day in Broncos country. Again, as Bo Nix was named the starter, we're going to go through uh, just some of Sean Payton's press conference, why that decision was made, what are the, the future ramifications, and a ton more in this video. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I'm Ben, diehard Denver Broncos fan, and I've been a Bo Lever since the second hour after we drafted Bo Nix, and, and we have a ton to break down today. But like I said, um, just the poll I threw up immediately after the draft that was like, hey, how many games should Bo Nix start? And all of y'all believed even before I did. Um, I think I truly believed when I saw Sean Payton FaceTime into the Pat McAfee show before the first round even ended, didn't even think about trading back in. He knew uh, that he had his guy then, and y'all knew too. And that is incredible because even last week when the initial depth chart came out and Bo Nix was listed three, how many lambasting articles about the Denver Broncos saying we're the 31st ranked uh, team in the entire football in all of the NFL and how ridiculous that take is that uh, Sean Payton knew we had his guy. He went on with Diana Rossini the other day and told us things we didn't even know that not only was he trying to uh, bluff and get the Minnesota Vikings to take JJ, but then he also called the, uh, Oak the Vegas Raiders to ask about trading back so that they thought they could get Bo Nix. And now they're in a quarterback battle with Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell, and they don't have an answer. Without a doubt, they would have gotten Bo Nix, and they would be in this exciting position that we are in, that we got the guy that where you're drafted does not matter. And I, I'm just honored to uh, be collecting all the comments and be a part of a community where you guys follow football and you actually saw this coming way before the national media did. Um, who are now like totally coping and trying to act like they liked Bo Nix all along, but we've kept receipts. We remember when they were making fun of Sean Payton for even looking through Bo Nix's backpack, and then you just see how differently they covered that backpack story now of like, oh, see, like, he's a football guy, and it like the the lack of attention to these Denver Broncos is comical, and I'm just telling you that this is um, that's going to change now because even today at work when this announcement came out, you saw ESPN going live to this and all these reporters acting like, oh, this we knew this was coming. It's like, no, you didn't. You were just making fun of that pick and saying, Bo Nix isn't that great. He's the third in the depth chart. And so all of that kind of stuff is ridiculous. All the negativity aside, we got to go into the great news of it and just how historic this is that for the first time in my entire lifetime, uh, I was born in 85, got to see Elway's last two runs in Super Bowls were really my formative years uh, in Colorado, 97, 98 season. And that's when I kept every clipping from the Denver Post front page during those Super Bowl runs. And it made me fall in love with football. And I love the fact that like in my son's formative years, Bo Nix is going to be his quarterback. And just to, to think about that in, in Denver, like how, how much Sean Payton truly does believe in Bo Nix that, um, Putting him out week one shows just an immense level of, of faith in it because he came out and was very clear in multiple press conferences and multiple interviews. He basically like put his laundry out there for everyone to see, and he called the shot, and he said, we're going to be better at evaluating quarterback than everyone else. And that's a really bold statement, and that's going to make him look so, so foolish if that doesn't ring true. And so if he wanted to hedge his bets, if he thought if he had any hesitation towards Bo Nix, then you'd let Jarrett Stidham start the year, but he doesn't have any hesitation towards Bo Nix, and he shouldn't. Bo Nix has thrown one interception in all of the time that the media has been allowed to be at training camp. Like, that is wild when you watch Hard Knocks and you see Caleb Williams, this generational talent, throwing tons of picks and, um, you know, even being taken out of practice because of all the interceptions he's thrown. And 
uh, th- there is just so much hope and excitement here. Like we've had a history of having incredible quarterbacks. Like even a Jake Plummer was great. A Jay Cutler was great. Uh, there were signs Drew Locke could be great. Obviously we had the Sheriff and Peyton Manning. And this is incredible to see that not only are we going to have a guy who, who we're going to be proud of for the next 10 to 15 to 20 years, uh, 20 years would be a stretch unless um, he's doing a lot of darkness retreats like Aaron Rodgers. But this is the start of the Bonix era, and I am just so happy that we've all been here together from the jump for it. Uh, again, Adam Schefter is somebody who I think um, is a little more of a bow lever and believes in what Sean Payton is doing here. And, and so he said, uh, expected but official. And I, you know, I do think he's changed his tune a little bit. He is very plugged in in Denver, knowing that's where uh, his media roots kind of start from. But it's just incredible to watch, um, you know, Sean Payton last week said the band is still playing uh, and then went on with that Kay Adams interview to be like, I don't have much of a poker face. And he came out in his press conference today and he did exactly what all of us in Denver thought he was going to do on this exact day. And he named Bo Nix the starter. And while I, I wasn't thrilled about, I, I wish he did this four weeks ago and that Bo had all of the number one reps. Um, but I, I feel like the way he did it built the culture of that locker room. And you heard Stiddy say that you see the results of it with the energy on the field um, and with how bought into this entire system they are. And it's just incredible to watch this um, press conference with Sean Payton. And you can just see just a grin on his face because he knows he has his guy. He he bluffed the rest of the NFL and it, and tricked at least two teams into making sure that Bo Nix landed here. Uh, and that's awesome. Um kind of nice to see them kind of have access that they did and, and uh, we appreciate them being here um i want to talk real quick about the quarterback position you guys have been real patient i understand you know and, and respect that that quick note today today was a ramp up practice a couple quick notes today today was a ramp up practice